I would like to first um, appreciate your time. Uh, I'm so grateful for the time you've given us to present where we come from. Uh, it's a pleasure, and I can assure you that your time with us is going to be more enjoyable and it's going to be fun filled. I even have a drum you can hear. So I'm going to have that chance to play the drum for you. So you will have chance to even sing with me. I have an African song here, which I'm going to teach you. It's just very simple. And we are going to play the drum together. So I can assure you, you're going to have a lot of fun with me. So, as I said before, you're welcome. So welcome again, Huayin Lai. Thank you. So, to begin with, my name is Drani John. That is my Ugandan name. And I used to have a Chinese name, which was given to me by my Chinese teacher. So it is called a to and you. So it's a little bit hard, but I hope I pronounce it uh, correctly. And I love it so much. I think it's a nice name, right? Okay, thank you so much. So currently, um, I'm a student at uh, Tangrong Daswe, which is in Tainan. And I'm in my third yeah, currently. Thank you so much. So, hello. Yeah, so currently, I mean, um, third year. So, I have been in Taiwan now for two years. And what are some of my hobbies? What I really, really like to do so much? I like to dance. So if you're a fan of dance, you can invite me so we can dance together. I also like to sing. I like to sing with people, with kids, and have fun with them. I also like playing football, which is also my hobby. And another one, I like to play the drum so much. So most times when I have the drum, I'm with it. So as here you can see, I have the drum with me. So don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. After some time, we are going to play the drums with you. And I'm quite sure you're going to have fun with me. Thank you so much. Where I come from, I come from Uganda. So you normally call it Uganda, and I like, I like it so much. It sounds very nice when people call it Uganda than Uganda. So these days, I, I just tell people I come from Uganda, so I like it so much. It sounds so nice to my ears. So I'm from Uganda. So when you look at the slide, you can see the flag of Uganda. So the flag has... Uh, around four colors, black, yellow, red, and the white color in the middle. So uh, the black color means the people. So when you come to Africa, we are the black people. So in Uganda, we say the country is for the black. So the black color means the people, the blacks. Then we have yellow. The yellow color means the abundant sun sign we have in Uganda. Actually, when you come to Uganda, you have a lot of fun. Uh, the sun sign we have in Uganda is actually fun. It's abundant and it's very beautiful. A lot of people normally come to Uganda for tourist attraction because we have a lot of things to see. So please don't forget to come to Uganda and you're welcome. When you're coming to Uganda, don't worry, I will be there to welcome you and you will have fun with me. Then the red color means the brotherhood. In Uganda, we say, no matter where we come from, no matter the color you have, 
no matter the tribe where you come from, when they cut our skin, we all have the same color of the blood, which is red. So in Uganda, we say we are all the same people. We are one people. So when you come to Uganda, we don't have um, a discrimination. So when you come to Uganda, you just feel at home because everywhere we are, we are one people. The blood unites us and we are one people, the whole world. So have fun, come to Uganda. Then um, the white color shows how Ugandan people are very, very welcoming. Actually, um, when you come to Uganda, the people, the Ugandan people, welcome you with a smiling face. So you will see their teeth outside, very white, welcoming you. So we are very welcoming people. So uh, that white color shows the hospitality we have in Uganda. Then the bird. <laughs> I remember I went to some uh, primary school I mean, elementary school here, they told me, hey, your flag has chicken. Oh, it's not chicken, okay? <laughs> it's not chicken, please, it's not chicken. But it looks like chicken, right? <laughs> but it's not chicken. That bird is called crested crane. We call it crested crane. And it's our national bird. It's called Crested Crane. It's our national bird. The flag, all the colors, we got it from that bird. So when you come to Uganda, we, we like that bird so much. So we respect that bird. It's like our national bird. So because we got all the colors from that bird. So it's called the Crested Crane. Moving to the next, So as you can see here, these are some of the photos I had. Can you just, can you, just uh, you know, share your screen, the whole page, so that we can take a look at the photos much more clear. Okay. Underneath. All right. Like, yes, exactly. Thank you. All right. So you can see the photo, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. So these are some of the photos I had um, when I go to some places. I, and have uh, interaction with the kids. As you can see from that, that first photo, I was playing drums with kids and you can see how fun I was enjoying it. I was all very happy, uh, smiling because uh, I like it when I have fun with kids. Then the second one, you could see there, as I said before, I like to dance and I'm dancing with kids. I'm teaching the kids how to dance and it was all fun. And I'm teaching them how to play drum. And then the last photo with the student on my background putting on a yellow, it was in Ping Dong, that side of uh, Taojo, that mountainous side. I went there. We also had fun with the students. They are really very welcoming students. And I had a chance to play football with them. They were very happy. I felt like not to come, but. <laughs> I had to come. So basically that is about me. And I'm very, very friendly person. You can anytime conduct me, reach out to me and I promise you, I will get back to you because I love being friendly with people. And I also like to improve my Chinese. So if you want to be my Chinese teacher, you will come. Thank you so much. And then, talking briefly about Uganda, actually Uganda is a country located in eastern part of Africa. Don't fail. Yeah, so Uganda is located in eastern part of Africa. And when you compare the temperature of Uganda and Taiwan, I think <laughs> Taiwan is hotter than Uganda. 
it's fact. I'm telling you the fact. Yeah, I'm telling you the fact. Taiwan is hotter than Uganda. So our average temperature in the whole year is around 22.8. So Uganda is very cold, very cold. So you're welcome to Uganda anytime, everywhere, wherever you are, you're welcome to Uganda. And the culture in Uganda, we do have very many cultures and tribes, around 56. And each tribe or culture has its own language. So Uganda is not like Taiwan. Wherever you go, you speak the same language. Like you're in Taipei, you come to uh, Taichung, the same language. You go to Pingdong, the same language. You go to Kaohsiung, the same language. When you come to Uganda, every tribe has its own language. So like my language is different. So when I go to another place, their language is also different from mine. So, but what we use to communicate in Uganda with other tribes is we use English. And actually English is um, like our um, second language, let me say like that, because in Uganda we study using English. So the moment you join elementary school, you will start to learn and study in English. So when you come to Uganda, most of the people can speak English. Most Ugandan can speak English. So when you come to Uganda, you don't have to worry. And I know all of you can speak English. So yeah, you're welcome. Then the second language is called Swahili. Yeah, um, it's called Swahili. It's more like um, an African language. Let me say like that. It's not only spoken in Uganda, in Tanzania. It actually originated from Tanzania. Then in Uganda and other parts of East African country, we all speak as Swahili. So that is also another language in Uganda we use to communicate with other people from other tribes. Then briefly about the democracy part in Uganda. Actually, um, Uganda was colonized by the British. Yeah, the people from England. So Uganda got um, independence on October 9th. So since that independence, Uganda also has a lot of um, uh, different presidents. And in Uganda, the country is multi-party system. We also have a different uh, parties, like in Taiwan here, we also have different parties. And in Uganda, we also vote every uh, five years. But unfortunately, uh, our president has been in power almost now 40 years. Because it's like every time people vote, um, yeah, he's still, a much Victoria, so he has remained the president for quite some time. So that is it. Then um, to some part, I remember I went to Gaussong, I was speaking to some teachers and they were asking me about um, gender equality issues in Uganda. That uh, in Uganda, how is how are the issues of gender equality? And I can assure you in Uganda, gender equality has really, really, really improved. And at the moment, we have almost equal opportunities for both um, women and men. So in Uganda, we have gender equality. So when you come there, you don't have to worry, hey, I'm a woman. They are going to do what, what? or sexual harassment. Yeah, when you come there, somebody uh, harass you sexually, you can go to uh, the police, though we still have the challenge of the law enforcement because you can have the law, but enforcing it is another challenge. We have the law, but still there's a challenge of enforcing the law. That means uh, 
we still have issues of uh, um, gender violence in Uganda. So that is something I believe we need to work on. Then also in the government, we also have um, currently uh, the second top most positions in Uganda, apart from the president, are held by women. So that can tell you in Uganda, we value women as we value men. So you could see the vice president of Uganda is a lady. Even the prime minister of Uganda is a lady. And the speaker of the parliament of Uganda is also a lady. So that tells you we do have gender equality in Uganda. So you can see the top positions held by women in Uganda. And don't, don't, don't worry, next time when you have questions, you can keep it. I will have some time for you to raise your question, then I can answer them for you. Then um, our capital city is called um, Kampala. Yeah, so that is our capital city. Um, it's called um, Kampala. That is the capital city of Uganda. So uh, you're welcome. You can anytime come to Uganda and have fun. And it's really nice. People are so welcoming. You have a lot of things to share, a lot of food. And this is um, actually a video showing yeah. um, different uh, kind of animals and uh, tourists attraction sites in Uganda. But uh, I don't know if I can say it now or maybe uh, later when we have time, we can share it or when we have time to meet, maybe me and you uh, and when I have opportunity to come at your place, which I have a lot uh, to discuss about it. This is a video. Maybe probably I'll show to you um, later. All right? Hello? Okay. Okay, so everything is okay, right? Perfect. Thank we you so much. much about the yeah. culture, the way the, the political parties are held by women. I was so surprised that I know little about your country. Yeah. So, so terrific. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the skyscrapers in the capital cities are very advanced. Yeah, very advanced, actually. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. So let's move on. Now, let me go to um, another interesting part. That is the Ugandan dress. How people dress in Uganda. Normally, when you come to Uganda, uh, the women put on a cloth called um, gomasi. So the first, the, the first photo actually shows how the gomasi looks like and how they put on it. But the gomasi is normally used for like a cultural activities, like when there is wedding, um, uh, there is a party, birthday party, and maybe other maybe traditional marriage, such things. People normally dress on gomasi. It's called gomasi. Okay, you can. <laughs> Repeat it. It's called gomasi. Don't forget, right? Yeah, thank you so much. Then the second photo is called kitenge. Actually, kitenge is not only worn in Uganda, also um, many parts of East Africa or generally Africa, we do wear um, kitenge. So it's called a kitenge. Yeah, so actually the one I'm putting on is also... Uh, one of it, so you could see here. So it's, it's, it's the Chitenge. You could see this is uh, what I'm talking about. So this is the Chitenge. So this is how it looks like. So 
I also like it because uh, it represents where it comes from. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that appreciation. I love it so much. Mm, I like it. Then, <laughs> for the male or the men, we put on a cloth called a kanzu. So, the kanzu is also like the goma, see? People put on it when there is um, some activity, cultural activity or wedding, and I have it here. So most times when I go to schools, uh, when they invite me to go there and sell my culture, I normally go with it. So I put on it and you know, people say, wow, it's so nice. And, you know, I feel so great and I love it so much. Yeah. So I have it here. Next time we have a chance to meet. Yeah. And I have to. If you're a male, yeah, you can also put on it and have a photo with it. It really looks very nice. And then the second one is also uh, the titenge. So you could see the titenge, the one I'm putting on is almost the same with the one on the photo. Remember, if you have questions, always keep name. We shall have time for that. And this here, also uh, the, some of the dresses here. They, this one, the the one the top on the top corner of the right is like this is a the aboriginal tribe in uganda it's like here where you have also aboriginal tribe i remember one is called uh bonon how do you call it bono like that they also aboriginal tribe we also do have them in uganda and normally um they still maintain sincerely their cultural way so this is one of them in Uganda is called uh, the Karamodong. So this is how um, they dress. So that is how they dress. Then we also have some different tribes putting on like this one, the one on the, um, the bottom left. The bottom left, yeah, that is also another tribe. They are called the Toros and yeah, they also dress like that. But this one is for the kings or the princes of the culture or of the tribe. So they normally dress like that. Then this one is a photo of Ugandan wedding. So when the people are wedding, you could see they put on the kanzu and the gomasi for the lady. So that is a, a photo of the wedding in Uganda. So it looks so nice, right? <laughs> yeah. So when you come to Uganda, yeah, you can have one. Not very expensive, actually, yes, yeah, so you can have one and it will be fine. So that is about the dressing and the cultures of Uganda. I hope you've learned something, as I said before, and yeah, you like it. I have the kanzu, yeah, next time. Then let's go to the food. Yeah, uh, the food is a bit different from the food in Taiwan, actually. So when uh, we first came here, it was a bit a challenge to eat the food here. So in Uganda, our most foods are, we eat green banana. And actually many people here are surprised. Oh, you eat green banana, not the yellow banana. We also eat the yellow banana, but the yellow banana, we eat it as a fruit, like the way you eat it here. But when it is still green, we cook it, and we grind it, then it appears like this, and we eat it with the sauce. Either meat or any other sauce, vegetables, and you eat with it. How chi, and how chi. In fact, fei chang chi. So, and here sometimes uh, we also do have the chances where we can cook it for people to taste. And some uh, people, have already tested it and they like it and say wow it's nice it's nice so next time uh if you want i can still make it for you and you taste and you say wow mm, very very nice very very nice and i'm quite sure you will like it then um we also have other foods like uh, as i said the cassava also the potatoes we do have them but in uganda we eat rice, but we don't eat rice like the way we eat rice here. 
in Asia. Like here, you people eat um, a lot of rice. It's like here, almost every day I eat rice. But when I'm in Uganda, I rarely eat rice because um, we rarely eat rice. Our main foods are the yeah the bananas um the cassavas and uh, also the uh, potatoes. We eat them in Uganda. So um and another thing is in Uganda also um Uganda is mostly known outside when people come to see actually the longest river. I mean the longest river in the world is called the Nile River, and its source is in Uganda. So it started from Uganda. So many people normally come to see the longest river in the world. Well, where is the shore? And it is a center of a tourist attraction. A lot of people come to Uganda to see it. So just welcome to see it. It's fine. Then we also have the second largest freshwater lake in the world. It's called Lake Victoria. Most of you know about it. I like it. Most of you, wherever I go, the student tells, oh, you know, Lake Victoria, they know Lake Victoria. And it always makes me so happy. So that is Lake Victoria. And it is said by Uganda, Kenya, and also Tanzania. So these are some of the photos of the food we eat in Uganda. You could see <laughs> this is a bit unique. Yeah, it's called uh, Tikomano. It's with, uh, this one is called Tapat. It's like a, um, how do you call it here? Mm -hmm. Temping. Yeah, it's like that, but we eat it with beans and also so. Then this is the banana, and then this are some of the foods we have in Uganda. Then um, let me go to uh, some uh, touching story, um, which is um, still a challenge um, in Uganda. And we still have to live by it. Yeah, but uh, we are trying to make a change in it because um, it's some outside. That is the period of poverty in Uganda. And we are lucky because we have a, a Taiwanese organization. It's called a Love Binti. And then Uganda, they're also working to help in that aspect of the period of poverty in Uganda, and we feel really uh, privileged. Uh, when I met one of them last year in Taiwan here, as she told me a lot about Uganda. So as she told me, she's in love with Uganda, so, uh, and she loves it there. So that's the challenge. So when you look at the period of poverty in Uganda, uh, this is a situation where, um, the menstrual health of uh, women or the girls is as well as a stigma and same surrounding uh, and uh, menstruation. And it prevents a lot of girls from fully participation in societies, especially in the rural areas uh, where girls face a lot of challenges. So in a report in a 2019, as you can see, one out of four girls drop out of school when they start menstruating. So when you look at that, that is a, a saddening situation because um, one out of four drops out. That means in eight, two people drop out as a result of menstruation, which is something which is really normal. It's a normal, it's a normal thing. Ideally, it should not be a challenge to people because it shows that you're healthy, you fine. So that is uh, still a big challenge. And, and many students also, many girls drop out of school because of it. So it's uh, still a very big challenge. Uh, then what are the some issues, some of the issues uh, to the period of poverty in Uganda? Challenge is one is uh, poverty. Then we also have a uh, poor water supply. We also have unclean sanitation. And we, we do have the, the cultural issues and also lack of knowledge about the administration. And also uh, poor uh, the health system, which is not advanced like the one in Taiwan. So that is still uh, a very big challenge. So when you look at uh, the poverty rate, 
we still have around 40 percent live in poverty so especially in the rural area it's very hard and the disposable sanitary pad costs around one to 1.9 usd in ugandan ceilings that is around 3500 and most people cannot afford it so because of this young girls uh, they normally have uh, a sexual uh, intercourse or abuses as a result because they need to buy uh, the sanitary part and they don't have money and maybe also their parents don't have the money to have it so they go to these people who normally have it and in a result uh, in the end they are sexually abused when they are still very young and the, the situation actually wasn't during the COVID-19. So that is still a very big challenge in Uganda. So every time sometimes I think about it, it still pains my heart. And we also have inadequate water supply, especially in the rural areas. So you could see some of the water sources in the photo here. They are just getting the water from the stream. So imagine a girl using this water clean herself during um, the menstruation uh, period. It's so, uh, it's painful because it uh, poses a lot of uh, infections and risk uh, to the girls uh, during that period. So that is still another challenge. And I remember uh, one of the issues tackled by uh, that organization called Love Binti is, an, uh, is a Taiwanese organization working in Uganda is to provide access to clean water to uh, schools, uh, they have tap water so that, that the students and the uh, the elementary kids can have um, access to clean water. So that is still a very big, very very big challenge. And we also have unclean sanitation. So you could see um, in this photo, these are some of the toilets at schools. So imagine a young girl having a menstrual period is going there to clean herself how the risk is it's very very risky and it poses a lot of infection to the young girls so that is still something we have to live um with it um but we are hopeful uh when we we still combine together we are going to uh fight it so please you're also welcome to join us to fight that activity so please in case you can reach out to me. We can help everywhere in the world, not only in Uganda. Everywhere, almost, people still face the same challenge. Then we also have um, cultural issues. You know, as I said before, um, in Uganda, we have very many cultures and tribes. We have very many cultures and tribes, and each culture and tribe have uh, different perception about a uh, menstrual period and in some cultures like like they they normally believe like when a girl is in her menstruation period they are unclean so that means they are not clean to be in the society so they have to isolate and be somewhere separate imagine that and this is something normal. It's normal. It's not an abnormality. So why should people treat you like that? Um, it's still a very big challenge. And let me say a, a very interesting story with you. I remember when I went to Gaussian High School girls, they asked me, but you're a boy. Why? Why, why do you uh, get involved in the issues of menstruation period? then i told them the sad story i remember during my high school i was in a class uh, we were actually in a class like this and then one of uh, the girl in the class started menstruating and we maybe that was her first time so big uh, during that period she was there so blood started dripping down then she felt embarrassed then the boys in the class, when they noticed, they started laughing because they lack knowledge about it. So they started laughing. Then the girl got embarrassed. And you know, girls, most times they're very shy. So the girl left, she went home, 
almost for two weeks. She could not come back to school because she felt ashamed. And the boys laughed at her. Then from that experience I had, then I took her address. I say, how can I help in? And also when I was in Uganda, I wanted to be a medical doctor, actually. Yeah, so I joined a medical school. So during my med school, I, I, I also acquired a lot of knowledge about uh, issues like this one. So I used that experience. So when I was still in Uganda, how I held, I get, uh, I actually helped in involving the boys to fighting, in fighting, I mean, in fighting a period poverty. How can the boys help in fighting the period of poverty. One is they give assurance to the girls that it's normal. When it happens, they should not laugh at them and sympathize with them so that they feel, oh, they are really love. And when that one happens, they feel, yeah, it's really normal. So that was one thing I was really uh, involving in community gatherings and a lot uh, I, I talk about them and it was good. It helped, then I came back. Unfortunately, I don't have an organization or something like that to help the community. But personally, I took it as a challenge and I tried to help using my knowledge from the medical school and also my experience. And I try to help. And the good thing is I have my sister here. Later, she was also uh, there. She has uh, some organization which also works in Tanzania. And since Tanzania and Uganda is there, I'm actually discussing with her how we could extend that support to Uganda. Yeah, so that is about the menstrual period. So thank you so much about that. Then my culture in Uganda is called the Madi. So our culture is called the Madi. So yeah, we are not many in Uganda actually. Uh, more of our people are in Sudan and also DRC Congo. In Uganda, uh, uh, we are a bit minority, so we are known for being warrior and hunting. Those days, our people will normally go to the bush and even kill lions and leopards. So when you come to Uganda, people, when you say you are married, people say, oh, these people are warriors and they like to hunt and fight. No, but I don't fight, okay? <laughs> don't worry, I don't fight. I'm so friendly. Yeah. Then, um, as I said before, I like drums so much. So in actually, uh, in my in Uganda, we, we, we play drums actually at every event. When somebody is marrying wedding, we play drum. When they give birth to a child, we play drum. And when somebody dies, we still play drum. That's a surprise. In many of uh, African countries, they normally rarely play drums when somebody dies. But for us, when somebody still dies, dead, we still play drum. So drum is like a part of us. And these are some of the types of drums we normally play. So I have talked a lot. So now please turn on your microphone. We are going to sing. Let's have fun. All right. Oh, so crazy. So good. Thank you. Shisheni, man. Okay. It's possible you can also turn on your You're welcome. That we can gather together. Yeah, thank you. So you will show me, show us your face. Sorry? I mean, all the other attendees, you can just yeah. you know, turn on your webcam so that we can get it together. Yeah. I really love the African song, which brings me joyful um, mood. Turn on your microphone. I want us to learn and play some song here. So then I'm going to play the drum and you have fun with it. So I have the drum here. So I don't know how you're going to see it. Excuse me, let me adjust a bit. Yes. A 
ready? Yes, ready. All right. Like yes, it. ready. All right, all right, all right. I like it. So, <laughs> actually, the song is called Jumbo. Can you say Jumbo? Jumbo. Jumbo. Actually, you people cannot speak the language. Ah, okay. okay. The song Jumbo means hello. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in Swahili, Jumbo means hello. So next time when you see me, you can say Jumbo. It's just hello. Like, Jumbo. 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 Yeah, I love that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so it's just like Jumbo. When somebody say Jumbo, uh, you can as well answer Jumbo. It's like hello, hello. When I say hello, you say hello. It's like ni hao, then you also say ni hao. So it's very easy. Then when you want to say how are you, we say habari gani. Habari gani. You know it now. How did you know it? Hey, you people, you know it very well. Ah, you know it. I'm so happy. So we say habari gani. Habari gani. Is how are you? How are you? It's very easy, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then when you want to answer, I'm fine. You can say nzuri. 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 Yeah, nzuri is I'm fine. Then when you want to say like nihao, you say mm, like you want to say Habari gani. Sorry. Habari gani. Aha, nzuri. So I'm fine. <laughs> nzuri means fine. Then when you want to say you are very fine, you put sana. Sana means like, sana is like hen hao or fei chang hao. So sana means like fei chang or hen. Then nzuri means fine. So you say nzuri sana. I'm very fine. Sana, I very fine. Very good. Yeah, very sana. fine. Yeah. It's just Nzuri Sana. So Nzuri it's sana. like that. It's it's Nzuri Sana. So um so I'm going to teach you how to sing the song, okay? So it's the, like greeting. So it goes like jumbo jumbo poana. Again, let's go. Jumbo. Wanna jump wanna go wanna okay. you repeat jumbo two times then you say buana 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 is like sa okay it's like sa. sa like sa so when you come we say sa welcome so hello sa so we say jumbo 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 buana jumbo buana jumbo, jumbo. Jambo. Jambo Jambo okay. After I sing, then you also sing, okay? First listen sure. to me, okay? Okay. Jambo. 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 Okay. Jambo. Jambo. Okay, start. Jambo. One, two, three, start. Okay. Jambo. 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 Aha, very good. Oh yeah. Again. Let's Jambo. go. Jambo. Jumbo. 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 You see, you see, uh, you know it now. Okay, let's go again. Jumbo. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, you see, now you're moving very fast. Okay. So it goes like Jumbo. 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 Jumbo, 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 
Jumbo Bali, Kapari Gali, Zurisana, Jumbo Aha, Jumbo Aha, Jumbo Bana, Kapari Gali, Kapari Gali, Zurisana, Zurisana. So, can you sing it now? Yeah. Yep. Sure. So we can play the drum, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. going to sing the song and i'm going to play the drum right okay, okay. Uh, i'm ready ready all right you're ready, 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 ready. <laughs> thank you so much you're ready i love that i love that so there you are. <laughs> i'm so happy you know that i like it all right okay jumbo 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 Jambuana, Haparikani, Zurisana, Jambu, 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 Haparikani, Zurisana. Play it with the drum, okay? Yeah, okay, okay. Sure. Okay, okay. okay. Ready? Ready. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Let's go. One, two, three, we go. Jumbo, 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 <laughs> you're not you're not singing can you sing uh with your drum once so we yeah. know how to do it with the drum okay i will be the one to play the drum all right then you sing the song yeah okay 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 oh you want you oh you want us to sing in the song in Taiwanese. Now, in your language, we okay. want to learn. Okay, that's good. Thank you. So, let's. We are going to sing. Okay. Jambo, jambo buana, aparika, aparika, surisana, surisana, jambo, jambo buana, aparika, ni. Zurisana, Jambo, Jambo, Obana, Aparitani, Zurisana, Jambo, Jambo, Obana, Aparitani, Zurisana, Jambo, Jambo, Obana, Aparitani. Can you just dance, dance and sing together? All right. I really love your dance. You should really see how Johnny Zhang dance to the music. He's got so rhythmic. All right, all right. The dance, okay? Yes. Can you just stand up and dance? If you are possible, everyone, you can just dance. So, you know, we all sit together in the office. We really need to relax for a while. If there is no one laughing at you, you can just stand up. Okay. I was, I was thinking the dance. Later, we are going to dance with Benika. How do you see? Oh, oh, yeah. I, I think okay. later so, everyone, everyone, so now, they, uh, later, Benika will be on, online you know and they, they will just dance together. So I want us to sing a song which you know. Last week I went to Taijong and they were, they were teaching for me a song in, uh, in a Chinese. Let me try it if I can sing. And if you know it, you will join me, okay? All right? 
Mm, okay. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Go. The song goes like this. Tinyaida ai sang ni chong na tien ti tien mi da han ti ni Tinyaida pleren si ni da yen ni ai sang ni Wow! Okay, you know it. Right, so, so we told him last week, just last week, and he really loved this song. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still trying to learn. Yeah. Then, okay, next well. time when we meet, uh, I, I will learn it fully. But I like it. It's a very nice song. So yeah, I hope you also like it again, right? Can you can you so, just sing together? Can everyone? So we are going to together? sing together, and I'm going to play the drum for it. Okay. Okay. Turn on your microphone. We are going to sing and I'm going to play the drum for it. All right? But the only part I know is only that one. The other one is still like, I'm still learning. So. All right. So if you know it, sing with me. Okay. So one, two, three, we go. All right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You are not singing now. Okay, let's first start singing, then I'll play the drum. We are going to repeat uh two times, okay? Okay. All right, let's go. One, two, three, we go. Tinyaida Aishani Jonathan. Now let's go. I'm, I'm going to play the drum. so much All right <laughs> so lastly let me show you how to say good morning in my language it's very simple it's called Owira. can you repeat oh Owira. 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 yeah good morning Owira. Oh, we evening is Ajira. Ajira. Very good. Ajira. Then thank Ajira. you. Ajira. 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 Yeah. Then thank you is like Manzora. It's like Manzora. In Chinese, you say Manzora. 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 It's like that. Manzora is like Manzora. Manzora. Manzora is like thank you. So in Chinese, it's like very easy, right? Owira, Ajira, Good morning. When they say Owira, you just say Owira. It's like good morning, good morning. Then they say Ajira, you say Ajira. Very simple. Then, thank you, Manzora. So today, thank you so much, Manzora. So this one is my Instagram handle, and this one is my line ID. So please, you can follow me on Instagram, and you can also send me um, online. This is my line ID, Brani123, and my IG handle. Also, the Facebook is Drani John Rose. So. 
sent me and handle. I'm looking for a Chinese teacher so that you'll be my Chinese teacher. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. I hope you had a fun. Did you enjoy it? Yes. All right. Thank you so, so much for your time. Now, see, I don't know now whether we have time for questions. I, I think we don't have time for questions now, <laughs> maybe later. Yeah. Yeah. I so, never saw that uh, Jenny Zhang's um, learning ability is so great. We told him the song last week, just last Friday, and he immediately got, got that. And I never assumed that he will perform in front of everyone. It's so good and daring. I moved to tears. I mean that. It's all my expectation, and that was so good. Yeah, so thank you. That's why it takes for us to learn new things. Yeah, and I believe, if possible, you can just invite Jenny Zhang to your own class 